a large percentage of New Zealand's most erodible land lies in the Horizons region. A sediment control initiative here is helping to keep valuable topsoil on the hill country and out of gullies and waterways. The voluntary scheme was created by the Horizons Regional Council and to date around 84% of the region's hill country farmers are involved. Following the 2004 storm event which resulted in major flooding, Horizons met with the local community and created the Sustainable Land Use Initiative which we call SLUI. Um, and then which to take this mountains to the sea approach and to protect our valuable hill country soil. By keeping the soil on the hills and out of our waterways it uh, increases river capacity which reduces flooding by also at the same time increasing water quality and sediment runoff into those waters. Horizons has 8% of the total land area in New Zealand and over 50% of our area is highly erodible hill country. So we've got a large scale to work with. Over the last 15 years, Horizons worked with over 800 landowners and in that we have mapped over 600,000 hectares, planted over 25 million trees, fenced over 1,600 kilometres with the help of the Hill Country Erosion Fund. Here on the Venels Farm, they've retired over 100 hectares and we've also worked by covering and protecting the other soil, Hill Country, that he has with the poplar poles, um, which also is quite a large amount, plus also his retirement of waterways and uh, reduces sediment loss um, and creates sediment traps, which then stops the runoff into our waterways. There's a whole lot of farmers that don't like these big poplars, eh? Like those ones back in the yeah in the seventies, the big massive things, and they all fall over. And we've got a few on the other side of the farm; they're yeah. a damn nuisance. So we don't want to let that happen again. But these yeah, these newer varieties seem to be going quite well. Yeah, so we've changed the new varieties. Uh, got away from those older, big, heavy trees to some uh, lighter, thin trees that are growing a bit higher, still having the shade effect and preventing that erosion coming out. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It's 513 hectares of country from flat to steep and everything in between basically. We're running 1,700 ewes, 700 hoggets and from that this year we've got about 2,800 lambs as well as 100 cows and 200 other trading cattle. We got knocked around badly uh, in 2004 with a major weather event coming through and um, it caused a, a lot of, of slipping on the hills affected our access ways and fences a lot. So the concept of slowy when it came into fruition actually made a lot of sense and um, it's been good to make the farm a lot more resilient for the future. And being a, a, a long held family farm since 1898 we want to protect it for the next generation the best we can. We've annually done um, poplar planting to control the hill paddocks as well as riparian fencing and planting as well as retirement of steep areas to forestry. Well, the benefit of Slowy was that they looked at the whole farm as a package. So they didn't just come and say, you've got to retire this bit of land. They looked at the more productive areas and what the potential was of those as well and, and gave us ideas as to how, how to make those areas more productive while we retired the, the lesser productive areas. So overall, it, it's, the income has po probably gone up actually um, by doing that because you can waste a lot of money on those less productive areas just in maintenance and scrub cutting and um, fencing, um, fertilising, all those things that you still put those inputs in but you're not getting the returns back. So, so we've been better concentrating on the better areas. It's been a real partnership. It hasn't been regulatory at all. There's been no pressure on us. We haven't been made to do anything from Horizons. We've just been given the tools and the advice and um, and and the resources to just get on and, and, and do it and, and work together, it's been, it's been great. We're at the Rangatike on a Puhi monitoring site, which is in the top part of the lower end of the Rangatike River. Here we measure the sediment, which is the soil, sand and silt that's floating in the water column. With a grab sample, we take those samples and it gives us a weight of sediment coming down the river at any one time. We can transform that data into a load per year, which is an annual ton tonnage of sediment. We also measure how clear the water is, so how far we can see through the water, and how much sediment is on the bed of the water. 
as sediment gets into the waterway, it moves through the water column, but it drops out onto the bed and it kind of creates a blanket of fine, silty material. This fills in the spaces where fish and invertebrates live and stops them being able to enter their homes, essentially. Also, it stops sight feeding fish to be able to see food. For humans, when we go swimming, we can't see hazards through the water very well if it's murky and cloudy. Um, and it's also not particularly nice to go swimming when the river doesn't look particularly inviting. Any level of sediment in water is natural, but when it gets too much, it can be an issue. We know that from our monitoring that a number of our rivers have too much sediment. We have 16 sites across the region where we're monitoring every 15 minutes and that information is sent back to our office automatically. That's supplemented with about 140 other sites, which we go out on a monthly basis to take those grab samples and views through the, through the water column. And that is telling us about the long-term change in sediment in the region. The new regulations from central government and the National Policy Statement for Freshwater Management require a lot more information from regional councils on the state of water, so we actually will probably have to increase our monitoring to um, support reporting against that. This is thought to be the first piece of work nationally that links land management improvements with National Policy Statement for Freshwater Objectives and Outcomes with a climate change lens over top, which is pretty exciting.